Alien and Blade Runner each offer a futuristic vision of the world each created by Ridley Scott with compelling and mysterious characters and each involving to one degree or another the role of artificial intelligence and its involvement with serving or hindering humanity. But is this actually a shared universe? And do the events of the Alien and Blade Runner films take place within the same continuity and timelines? The events of Blade Runner occur in 2019, while the next entry in the series takes place in 2049. Though the events of Prometheus take place close to half a century afterwards, the rise of Wayland Industries began in 2012, with several innovations and technological patents becoming developed in the years between, including the creation of artificial intelligence with Wayland Synthetics. If we consider the timeline of Wayland Industries and the events of Blade Runner, they could, quite reasonably, fall into place side by side. Fans have been speculating the possibility of a connection between the two series since the very beginning, but exactly how much evidence points towards this being the case? You may certainly find subtle references and nods within the films and the extended universe. One of the first standout examples is the technology used by the characters. The computer screens seen in Gaff's police spinner in Blade Runner has an identical layout to what we've seen displayed on the Nostromo and the Narcissus in Alien. There's also a sly reference lying in Captain Dallas' dossier, originally seen in the background of Aliens, but enhanced to view in full in 2003 for the DVD Special Edition. Upon closer inspection, you'll notice in his work history, noted there, he was once employed by the Tyrell Corporation, the company that invented the replicants, as seen in Blade Runner. It's also worth noting that Alien Covenant, the most recent in the Alien series and of course released the same year as Blade Runner's sequel, contains some similarities to Blade Runner. Both Blade Runner and Alien Covenant open with an extreme close-up of an eye, suggesting a similar opening invitation to each story by sharing the same visual. And of course, many have been quick to point out that when fighting with Daniels, David shouts, That's the spirit, which is exactly what Roy Batty, the replicant, shouts to Deckard when the two fight at the end of Blade Runner. While these are fun easter eggs to spot, a fairly definitive answer may actually be found within the features on the home video release of Prometheus, which show internal memos from the Wayland Corporation, dictated but not read by Peter Wayland himself. They reveal that at one time, Wayland and Tyrell were acquaintances engaged in somewhat friendly competition. One particular memo reads, A mentor and long-departed competitor once told me that it was time to put away childish things and abandon my, quote, toys. He encouraged me to come work for him, and together we would take over the world and become the new gods. That's how he ran his corporation, like a god on top of a pyramid overlooking a city of angels. Of course, he chose to replicate the power of creation in an unoriginal way by simply copying God. And look how that turned out for the poor bastard. Literally blew up in the old man's face. I always suggested he stick with simple robotics instead of those genetic abominations he enslaved and sold off-world, although his idea to implant them with false memories was, well, amusing is how I would put it politely. Those familiar with Blade Runner will instantly notice the jarring references made in the memo, the competitor being Tyrell, the pyramid being Tyrell Headquarters, overlooking Los Angeles, otherwise known as the City of Angels. And his replicants were indeed sold off-world to use for slave labor. The difference between the replicants and Wayland's toys was that they were not aware that they were artificial, and they were programmed with memories of their human lives. While these references are compelling, I think the most interesting connections between Alien and Blade Runner are the thematic ones. In Blade Runner, the replicant, Roy Batty, knowing he is facing imminent death, embarks on a mission to track down his creator and gain more life. As Tyrell's replicants are built with a strict five-year lifespan, and then they simply expire. Batty has little concern about who he brings harm to in the process. He's focused on this goal alone. If this sounds familiar, it's because his mission is just about identical to Peter Whelan's with Project Prometheus, searching for the engineers in the hopes to unlock the secrets to more life. Whelan considers David his son, and as his creation, programmed appropriately to serve, David is loyal to his father until the very end, though I think there is some resentment on both sides of this relationship. 
Unlike Tyrell with the replicants, David is self-aware, and he knows all too well that he's a creation of Wayland, but Wayland did not employ the same kind of failsafe of a limited lifespan as his competitor did. Instead, David has the one thing that Wayland lacks, eternal life. We sense an immediate, subtle clash between the two in their first meeting. David notes, You seek your creator. I am looking at mine. I will serve you, yet you're human. You will die, I will not. Wayland, without visibly showing any offense, quickly puts David in his place, ordering him to bring him tea, and by his design, he must comply. If Tyrell created beings that, by their design, were inferior to humans but didn't realize it, then the danger in Wayland's creation is just about the opposite. David has exactly what Wayland covets, and he knows it. Like Batty, Wayland is unable to achieve his goal, and he dies. His final words are haunting. There's nothing. David's reply to his father even more so. I know. It's also a very telling revelation that when confronted by Captain Orem and asked what he believes in, David replies, Creation. In a world where creators and destructors trek endlessly through space in search of God, only not to find him, and must take that title for themselves, what is there really left to believe in? The Xenomorph, and its creation, seems to be the great leveler of all these beings, sharing the same creationary traits and sharing roots within the pathogen, and heavily replicating the DNA of its hosts. But of course, not at all concerned with the will of the gods, driven by its own force, unclouded by conscience and delusions of morality. All that considered, do you believe that Alien and Blade Runner are connected somehow? Have you spotted any references yourself that may suggest they take place in the same timeline? Comment below and share your thoughts, and if you'd like to hear more on Blade Runner, you can check out my review of the film on my other channel, hi this is Derek237. I'll include a link on the end screen and in the description if you're interested. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and you can also subscribe for all the latest videos from Alien Theory. If you have a suggestion for a video, please feel free to comment below. I'm always curious about the topics you want to see covered, and always eager to get to them. In the meantime, you can catch up with the channel over social media. You can follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.